Hey, I'm Sven from the B Music Project. Today we're gonna make a simple user interface for our MyAmp plugin using GDK. Note, it took me a long time to think about if I should make this video or not. To explain why or why not would take a bit longer. Enough for another video. Anyway, the very vast majority of experienced programmers are familiar with toolkits like GDK and Qt. Looking into the LV2 specifications and finding interfaces to these toolkits there would likely delight them all. And this is really the easiest way. Let's go! So what do we need in our LV2 package? The majority of LV2 plugins, like Littlefly, consist of four files. A manifest turtle file which contains a rough description of the plugin and links to detailed descriptions. A plugin turtle file with these detailed descriptions an executable with digital sound processing code and optional, an executable for user interface code. Let's start our new project on the base of our MyAmp plugin. We make a copy of our MyAmp project, rename it MyAmp underscore GTK3 and make some adaptions. Rename the plugin URI to MyAmp underscore GTK3 in all three occurrences in the manifest and in the MyAmp TTL file and in the descriptor in the C file. This is already all for the DSP part. Now we can add the user interface description to the turtle files. In the manifest we already have got a short description for the plugin. We additionally need a description for the UI, which will differ in the URI, the type and the link binary. So we duplicate the plugin description to make a new UI description from it. Change the URI by adding, let's say, UI. And it's not an LV2 plugin anymore. But what is it now? Inside the specifications, there is an example with an UI X11 UI. But we need GTK3 instead. There it is. So we can take UI colon GTK3 UI. Then the link user interface binary needs a different name add underscore gdk3. See also can link to the same detailed turtle file. The prefix ui is still undefined, but there was a prefix definition just at the top of the specification site. Copy and paste it. Also paste it to the detailed description file. As we don't have to add anything for the ui description, we can simply copy this part from the manifest. Don't forget the dot. To the plugin description. Add gdk to the plugin name and inform the plugin that it now has got a UI. How? Take a look again into the LV2 UI specs. The plugin URI, where we are now, UI, colon, UI and the user interface URI. So we type UI, colon, UI. Copy and paste our user interface URI and don't forget the same colon. Plugin and user interface description is done. For coding the user interface we firstly need GTK. The most recent version at the time point of making this video is 4.0, but LV2 only supports GTK2 or GTK and GTK3. If you don't already have installed the developer packages of GTK3 yet, then you can do this by calling sudo apt-get install libgtk-3 dev for Debian based Linux distributions and sudo pacman minus s gdk3 for arch based systems start with the header file create a file called myamp underscore gdk3.hpp ensure that the header is called only once using the macros if and def and define any symbol also this is not really needed for our simple project as we can ensure that this header file is only loaded once anyway then add the include for LV2 as we did in our previous projects. Keep in mind that the path is the same as in the online specification. Then add the include for the LV2 user interface and finally for GDK. This is all for the first for the HPP file. Then we create a CPP file. Include the just created header file. Then let's look into the UI extension API. Like the plugin code, the UI code at least consists of a set of functions handling the user interface instantiation, the cleaner removal of the user interface, 
port events to communicate with the sound processing part of the plugin and the host. Optional, the extension interface. A struct containing the user interface URI and function pointers to the functions just mentioned. And an export function to export the struct. The lazy way is to copy and paste the function pointer definitions. Add the keyword static to prevent direct export. Make a function out of it, you may keep the name. And add an empty function body. The same with cleanup, port event and extension data. Then the descriptor struct as we have seen it before in the API. Static again, const as it will not be changed, lv2 ui underscore descriptor type and any name. And it will be initialized with the user interface URID ID and the four functions. And finally the user interface export function. We can take its header from the API and like the lv2 export function it should return a pointer to our descriptor if index is zero, otherwise a null pointer. So switch index case zero, return reference of UI descriptor and otherwise default return zero. Don't try to return the C++ null pointer as lv2 simple export contains an external C statement and thus everything inside is C and not C++. Then we need to fill the empty function bodies. Similar to the plugin functions, instantiate creates a new user interface object and cleanup delays it. So it's a good idea to define an empty user interface object describing class in the HPP file first. Let's call it myMPUI. Later we will fill the class definition. Back to the instantiate function body. We try to create a new myEmp object. But if it fails, then instantiate should return null pointer as defined, instead of aborting the whole program. So we firstly define the pointer myMPUI asterisk UI. Then we try to create a new object by try UI is new myMPUI. And then we catch any exception with catch standard exception x return null pointer. It would be nice to print a message to the our console. Therefore we add just before, standard CR UI instantiation failed, standard end line. Red lines due to locking includes. So we include IO stream for CR and end line and standard accept for exception. By calling instantiate, the host system passes the plugin URI and its location on the file system. It also passes a pointer to a function to send data to the plugin input ports the write function, a pointer to the host provided controller and an array of feature pointers. We can and should use these data. First we have to check if it's called by the right plugin. We can do this by if string compare plugin URI and our plugin URI, not the user interface URI, not equals zero, then return null pointer. The write function and the controller pointer will later be used inside the myAmp object methods. Therefore, it's a good idea to store them as class members and forward them as constructor parameters and later let the constructor set the members. So we define both write function and controller in the myAmp class and define a custom constructor with these two parameters. Back to the instantiate function. Here we now call new myMPUI with these two parameters. The other instantiate parameters are not needed here, but the output parameter widget expects a pointer to the main widget. So we define an lv2 UI widget get main method in the myMPUI class. And asterisk widget is UI arrow get main. Instantiate returns an lv2 UI handle to UI. Cleanup is much simpler as it simply calls the implicit destructor. Cast back UI to a myMPUI pointer by myMPUI asterisk myMPUI a static cast myMPUI asterisk UI. And if myMPUI then delete myMPUI. Port event should be processed inside the object. Therefore we define a method port event with all its parameters except its handle inside the myAmp class by copy and paste. Also copy and paste the cast back to the port event function and forward the parameters to the object method if myUI exists by 
If my UI, then my UI error 41 and the parameters. And finally, extension data. We don't need any extensions for this simple GTK plugin. Therefore, we can return null pointer. It will be a bit different if we use other interfaces like X11. Now the boilerplate is done. This can be used for any GTK based user interface. And with some minor changes for all other user interfaces. Now we can fill the class methods with the user interface code in the next video.